So, um, um, I'm glad that Professor Yablanovic is here because uh, I'm going to start where he ended, that the future uh, is going to be very different than the past, but at least the present is very much like the past. <laughs> so, uh, that's actually what I'm going to talk about. So, uh, in the past decade, um, there were all these predictions about uh, gloom and doom, and, um, and I've been, uh, you know, part of uh, uh, making some of those predictions or acting on, on some of those predictions. And the reality, though, is that um, at least right now, uh, silicon technologies are, you know, better than ever uh, in some sense. So it's an interesting phenomenon. And um, uh, FinFETs, uh, in particular, are very close to uh, kind of an ideal device like we, you know, when CMOS was invented, uh, there was this notion that you can describe it as a kind of a perfect on-off switch, and FinFETs are, you know, pretty close to that, and then I'm going to have some discussion about different uh, aspects of doing some circuit design with FinFETs. So let's, let's see some of those uh, predictions. Um, so, for example, about lithography, right? So, lithography uh, has reached these limits. We need X-ray, we need extreme UV, we need electron beam. Uh, the ion-to-IO ratio is degrading. Um, how can we design with ion-to-IO, you know, uh, less than 10? Uh, the variations are increasing. Um, you know, we need stochastic computing. We need to tolerate errors. Um, the reliability of our devices uh, is degrading. Uh, how can we build uh, reliable systems with unreliable components? Uh, the silicon uh, reaches limits. We need alternatives. We need TFETs. We need BISFETs. We need 3.5s. We need carbon nanotubes. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm mixing them a little bit. The MOSFETs have reached their uh, limits. Uh, so we need these nano electromechanical systems and so on and so forth. And of course, the, the biggest one, you know, Moore's law is dead. Uh, this, this has been, um, um, you know, over and over. Now, um, the, uh, again, the, uh, what we are, and like I said, I, I've been part of uh, looking at all these alternatives. Uh, I, I went through molecular electronics, through carbon nanotubes, through graphene, um, like the whole community, and uh, my observation is that the community seems to have relatively short attention span. If you look, these concepts come and go. Uh, what has remained uh, more or less constant is uh, silicon. Uh, and silicon has changed quite a lot, uh, but once, you know, FinFET uh, has been um, 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 uh, let's say made manufacturable uh, in high volume uh, by Intel and, uh, and the other foundries, uh, they, uh, FinFETs have really uh, become um, um, you know, an amazing device that is really hard to compete against, frankly. Uh, and again, just uh, to um, uh, remind everyone, so this is a planar device, uh, this is a FinFET, it's really nothing else but taking the channel that used to be planar and bringing it vertical. You have this wrap around the gate now uh, that gives, uh, like Professor De Micheli uh, talked about this morning, uh, gives you this um, um, almost ideal e electrostatic control of, of the channel. Uh, and by the way, um, everything that I'm talking about here is going to appear in a special issue of um, the Journal of Low Power Electronics uh, this year. So, uh, lithography. Again, um, the end of lithography has been predicted. It's true that, you know, uh, um, the, um, you know, the foundries need uh, um, to put, you know, a lot of uh, effort into making lithography work, but 
uh, once the concept of multi-patterning, which is not an inexpensive concept, but it's a very powerful concept, uh, has been uh, controlled, uh, especially this self-aligned double and uh, multiple patterning, uh, what has happened is really remarkable. Because again, the reason people uh, were predicting uh, the gloom and doom about uh, uh, lithography was that, you know, even at 130 nanometer, uh, you know, the shapes were quite uh, rounded and, you know, they, they didn't look that good. So uh, it was kind of intuitive that trying to make things in the tens of nanometer, uh, things are going to be uh, much worse. Well, guess what? This is how uh, shapes look in 32 nanometer, and this is how they look in 14 nanometer. So if you compare this with this, I would make the, the claim that actually the results of lithography in current technologies are actually better than they were, you know, maybe 10 years ago uh, or more. And they are, you know, pretty close to back to the future, the way they used to be when we had shapes maybe uh, in, in the uh, micron uh, range. So lithography is looking really good. Now, another thing that people were predicting is this ion versus I-off. And this is from a paper about carbon nanotubes. And it shows the uh, voltage transfer curve of an inverter with carbon nanotubes that has a very steep uh, gain here. And the claim, and again, you know, is that MOSFET uh, are starting to have low ion to I-off, low gain. Uh, and again, maybe that was true uh, for um, uh, planar devices, but guess what? This is how FinFETs look like. Uh, and what's remarkable is not only that they have these very steep voltage transfer curves uh, at relatively high voltages, but even at 200 millivolts, uh, they, they have very, very distinct uh, voltage transfer curves that are quite usable. And again, I, I would claim that that's pretty close to, uh, to ideal. Um, and again, if you look at I on to I off, uh, remember the magic number that Professor Yablanovich talked about, 10 to the 6? Well, we have 10 to the 6 with FinFETs. We didn't have them, you know, with some of the planar devices, uh, but with FinFETs, we have uh, that magic number. Um, in terms of, uh, again, there is this alpha power law model, uh, that looks at, um, um, you know, how uh, a long channel device looks uh, versus a short channel device. And uh, again, the expectation is that once you have short channel effects, uh, the alpha goes from being the ideal two to something closer to one. Again, guess what? Uh, FinFETs uh, in, you know, 14 nanometer, uh, 7 nanometer, this is predictive. Uh, they are... Uh, pretty close to two, pretty close to a long channel device. Uh, and in terms of energy delay product, again, the results are quite superior. So to summarize, you know, I have here a table uh, that looks at uh, some technologies, and this is uh, my students that did all kinds of simulations with real technology uh, and also with some predictive. And again, there are a lot of numbers, but I would like you to maybe um, focus on, on these two. So uh, an interesting uh, kind of unexpected, at least, um, or I, sh I should say a good surprise, uh, has to do with the P2N ratio. Again, for the students in the class that take VLSI, you know, there is this um, uh, rule of thumb that you, you size your PMOS transistor two to three times larger than the NMOS to get, uh, you know, similar drivability. Well, guess what? With FinFETs, that ratio is, is close to one. So again, FinFETs are, you know, like an ideal switch. P and N are very symmetric, and you can size your, um, uh, your gates equally. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, um, uh, P2N ratio. Uh, and in terms of the subthreshold slope, and again, Professor Yablanovich 
uh, has this desire for one millivolt per decade, which would be really amazing. Uh, but again, if you look at some of the old planar devices, uh, you know, you, you are pretty far from the 60 millivolts per decade, which is, um, uh, again, the Boltzmann distribution. Uh, with FinFETs, you are almost there. So again, uh, FinFETs give you almost uh, the, um, the ideal um, uh, subthreshold slope that you can hope for for, the, for uh, any field effect transistor. Um, so again, just, um, um, in, uh, you know, we, we are uh, doing some tape outs in FinFET and there are many uh, changes, uh, but it's interesting to kind of look at how the layout of a FinFET uh, inverter looks like. So this is an inverter. Uh, basically what you have, you have these um, fins uh, that are um, laid out in a very regular structure. Again, the, they are made with that self-aligned process that cannot do, um, you know, arbitrary shapes. Uh, they are basically all one-dimensional, uh, you know, parallel lines, and then they are cut accordingly. Uh, the gates are the same, so the gates are vertical. Uh, and you need dummy fingers and dummy gates on the sides uh, of your cell to deal with uh, um, um, boundary effects. Um, but uh, other than that, again, you know, the layout is, is very regular. Uh, in some sense, it's easier to, to, uh, to lay out because you don't have that many degrees of freedom. Uh, these restrictive design rules uh, kind of force you to have very um, uh, clear um, uh, shapes for, for your cells. Uh, and this is how uh, a three input NAND um, uh, layout looks like versus the um, uh, inverter. And this is a cross-sectional area of that same um, um, uh, layout from here, uh, and something interesting that, again, it, uh, adds to the cost, but uh, uh, is this notion of middle end of the line. Uh, so again, in, for the students in the, uh, in the uh, audience that, you know, when we, in the kind of traditional VLSI, we talk about front end of the line, which are the active devices at back on end of the line. Uh, which is the interconnect. Uh, with these modern FinFET technologies, we have a middle end of the line, uh, which basically are the contacts between the active uh, and the back end of the line. Uh, and again, that, that brings some uh, extra challenges in, in doing layouts. Uh, now, there are issues. Uh, for example, the situation with the capacitances is uh, more complicated, so it's important to have good extraction tools for, for the capacitances because now uh, you are going to have uh, the fins um, and uh, it's a very three-dimensional structure uh, that has capacitances, um, you know, in all directions. Um, um, but you also have some, some uh, further deg uh, degrees of freedom. So for example, uh, and right now this is not being exploited by the commercial foundries, uh, you know, both Intel and TSMC and global foundries have this kind of tri-gate uh, structure. This is a, an Intel uh, terminology actually, uh, that has this um, uh, top of the two sides being shorted. But in principle, uh, uh, this top, uh, you know, third gate, in principle, can be etched away, and then you can be left with two sides of the fin fat uh, that act independently uh, from each other, uh, and that would be uh, basically short gated is the tri gate versus independent gated, and uh, in that case you could uh, do logic by uh, using the two gates um, 
uh, independently, you know, uh, for example, having two separate inputs, uh, A and B, and um, uh, gaining some extra functionality at the device level. Um, another aspect of uh, FinFETs is that there is almost uh, no uh, body effect. Um, and again, body effect is this notion that the uh, behavior of the device depends on the source to, um, to bulk um, uh, voltage. Uh, and this brings both challenges and opportunities. Um, so uh, one challenge is that for uh, circuit designers, we are um, you know, accustomed to use the body effect to our advantage to do body biasing. You can do reverse body biasing to reduce the leakage, you can do forward body biasing to increase the performance. If you don't have body effect, you cannot do that. Um, so you need some kind of a replacement if you want to do that. Uh, and um, we, you know, we published uh, a solution um, uh, at ISVLSI last year uh, in which we split the, um, uh, the structure, uh, both inputs, outputs, uh, VDD and the VSS, and by uh, changing basically the, the difference between the split uh, volt, um, uh, supplies, we can get the effect uh, of body biasing uh, without using body biasing. Um, again, I'm not going to get into details because I don't have time. Uh, an opportunity of the lack of body biasing uh, is that uh, high stacks become more appealing. Uh, for bulk devices, if you have a high stack, more than three, four devices, because of the body effect, uh, your structure becomes really slow. Uh, on the other hand, if you don't have body effect, you can have higher stacks. And by doing that, you can reduce your logic depth, so the number of logic levels that, that you need. Uh, and uh, we did some very simple um, uh, analysis, basically a 16 input um, a, a NAND structure uh, in, in, four, in three different um, configurations, one 16 input, you know, single structure, again, uh, four, four input uh, and uh, eight, two input um, uh, NAND gates. And the delay indeed for the 16 uh, uh, goes, uh, you know, much faster uh, than the others. And this wouldn't be true definitely for, uh, um, um, uh, wouldn't be true for um, a, a, a planar device. Uh, so, um, the, the, the last thing that I'm going to talk about, and it's going to take me a few slides, is this notion of the end of Moore's law. And again, Pro uh, Professor De Michele uh, didn't want to, to touch that because he's right, it can take forever, but I, I'm going to try to give you, you know, why Moore's law is not um, dead. So, it is true that, um, you know, for example, this... Uh, uh, what Intel calls the TikTok is slowing down. In other words, the introduction of a new technology node uh, is, you know, is a, a little bit delayed. Uh, for example, instead of two years, now you have maybe three years, and you know, there are all these... Um, uh, the ITRS uh, doesn't exist anymore. So there are many reasons um, uh, why, you know, pe that why people can argue that Moore's Law um, um, you know, is dying. But Moore's law was never really about lateral dimensions. It's all about uh, density of uh, devices per unit area. Uh, and this is from the original Moore's paper, uh, you know, uh, many decades ago. So uh, it turns out that uh, FinFETs provide this extra uh, degree um, of freedom uh, that, you know, keeps Moore's law alive. Um, and again, uh, if you look at the, uh, uh, the, the roadmap, um, the lateral dimension of FinFETs is shrinking at a slower uh, historical trend. 
But because of this third degree of freedom, the fact that uh, you have fins going up, uh, that makes up. So how, is, uh, how so? Uh, basically, this is what happens. If you look at successive uh, technology nodes um, uh, from Intel, uh, basically the fins not only are getting narrower and closer to each other, they also get higher. And um, why is that important? Well, because um, by, by increasing the height of the fin, you are actually increasing the drivability of your device. Uh, and again, uh, I'm running out of time, and I would like to, to have a chance to take a couple of questions. But what, what really what that means is that you need fewer and fewer fins to get the same drivability if you can make them taller. Uh, and uh, if you look in terms of Moore's law, uh, this would be the, uh, the Moore's law, uh, kind of uh, the, um, um, uh, you know, the, the historical trend. If you did this fins being, you know, both closer to each other and taller, every two years, you'd actually exceed Moore's law. If you do it at, the, uh, at a slower rate, you stay on the same uh, curve, historical curve, without having to do it every two years. And it turns out, uh, and, and by the way, I presented this at um, uh, SOC conference last year uh, as a keynote, but, you know, uh, Intel is making now the same argument, and they call it hyperscaling. And basically, you see how, how it happens, that for, from 14 to 10 nanometer, it's at, a, it's at a slower uh, rate in terms of time, but it's at a higher uh, rate in terms of actual uh, uh, density. Um, so, can you do this forever? Obviously, nothing is forever. Uh, you need to make fins taller and taller, but this is, for example, in the lab, they demonstrated an aspect ratio of 25. So, it, it can still uh, take for a while. Okay, so to conclude, uh, despite gloom, uh, doom and gloom, uh, silicon technology is uh, more vital than ever. Moore's law is still alive. There are many challenges and opportunities. Uh, and I'd like to acknowledge uh, the organizers for inviting me, some funding, and my students. Uh, and if you want more details, this paper is going to, to have them for a journal. Thank you very much. I'm not sure if there is time for...